My name is Rex Beeland. Welcome to this week's painting demonstration. Back to one of my favorite subjects at the moment. This is uh, um, Charing Cross in London. Okay, the colors. Possibly I'll use a little of this neutral tint. I think for sure some deoxazine purple. Definitely burnt sienna. Definitely alizarin crimson. Definitely cad red light. Possibly cad orange. Definitely Chinese white. Definitely yellow ochre, uh, probably uh, some cad yellow light, possibly some viridian, just a hint for accents of cobalt teal, then ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. Okay, starting with a little cad orange and with a little bit of yellow ochre in it, just for a change, I've been using yellow ochre so much. Putting this in the bottom of the sky. Trying to go around uh, a lot of the detail on the roofs. And now some cobalt blue to put in the top and let it all bleed together. It's uh, quite wet there, so I'm just letting it mix and mingle a bit. Now for the buildings, a very light wash of yellow ochre with a bit of that orange mixture in it. I'm just adding water here because I think it's a little bit strong. Then more of the that orange mixture now. Switching to a bit of blue, a cool wash, very light, but it just breaks up all that warmth. Now I forgot to leave the street lights, so lift that out and go around it. And I want this building to be more red. Again, I went right over the street light, which I wanted to save. I'm leaving that one window white. Don't know if it'll make much difference. Again, a bit of a cool wash up there, just for a change of pace. And uh, variety works a lot better than always the same thing. Testing this wash for the shadow part. To make sure it's okay. Now, yes, it's really running, really wet, which turns out to be fine, but uh, might have been nice if the first wash, the yellow wash was a little bit drier. Okay, go right down. My center of interest is uh, where the people are and around that area. And, and sort of beginning some of the details, some of the windows in that that are there. Again, adding some yellow ochre just uh, for variety. So deepening the shadow that will be in the window. This is part of my center of interest is these lamps Lamps hanging down, going around those. Going around the people. Just bringing this wash, the shadow, down to the sidewalk. Cutting around the, the people. Now on top of this sign there's a bit of plant life, so I'm just using some viridian, getting some green on there, and you, know, you don't want one color just in one area, so I'm just put a little over the edge. Now going in and darkening these, looks really strong, but it'll turn out to be uh, not so. I'm just changing the color a bit. The 
this time spent playing in the palette very valuable to get that right color so I'm using this to do the roof I kind of uh, I really wanted to start with this detail on the roof so it would run in but this way works fine too so these shapes weren't actually in the photograph I just uh, want some interest in that all-important skyline And bringing this shape, you know, adding these details, which actually weren't there just for interest, bring this shape right down into the roof, let it all mix together. So I'm making all the roofs and these shapes on the roof quite a dark value. No, I just I want to start actually with this chimney up here so that it will be ready to flow into, bleed into the roof when I get to that. So do that shape and have it go right into the roofs. quite a variety of colors into this so it will be hopefully a more interesting wash love all these details on the rooftops of European buildings Just darkening a few things and you can kind of see it bleeding into the uh, chimney there. I want a super light wash because these buildings are actually aside from the dark window glass panes in there the, the, the recessed window itself is a little bit slightly darker than the surrounding uh, wall. So I'm just going to do that first. You want a very, very light wash. And over on the left side there, I'm going to do everything I can to kind of lose that, make that really, really super loose, which will make your eye go towards the center where the detail is. And just adding some of the details. Just reshaping that. And now some Chinese white, a little bit of that violet to go in that window there. And a bit of a shadow on this sort of stone trim up there. Again on the left side I want everything to kind of fade off. Now to do the pavement, I'm going to try and leave this uh, bit of a crosswalk here, see if it works. The 
bottom half of this road will all be in shadow. But I'll cover it anyway and right over the car. A little bit neutralized towards the bottom. Let's cover that sidewalk so it's not white. You can see a lot of, I spend a lot of time mixing to try and get that right color. So I want this to be very light. It's a bit dark, I had some more water, so I'm just taking water here. This is for the windshield. And then while it's nice and wet, I make a darker mixture, much thicker. And I just dab it in, just puddle it in and let that run. It gives a very nice effect. Okay, now this building it's this building on the right here it's really its only purpose is to act as a foil to lead your eye into the other wall so I've, I've drawn detail on it but I'm not going to really do much with the detail so I just want the colors to really mix on the paper and you'll see I'm taking pure water towards the edge of the paper so that the wash sort of fades off on that side, which again leads your eye towards the middle. A lot of different color mixtures and letting them mix on the paper. I find this, it's a challenge to do the drawing and then not, not actually pay any attention to it. It's kind of a discipline to uh, sort of ignore it. Yet, this is the crucial to this particular part of the painting. Get that first wash on there and then into it add a darker and drier wash, not as much water. And you can see it kind of, it holds its shape a little bit much more interesting, mysterious kind of uh, shape. Again, very wet, so I'm tilting it up. Now, now, so this is what I was just talking about. It's still damp, so these darker shapes are going to kind of bleed and blend in. Very attractive, I find. It gives the idea of uh, detail without really hammering you over the head with it. Darkest right at the bottom, which is going to help bring that car out. And you can see how now your eye just goes through that to the back wall. And now, now the shadow. And if you kind of look, there's almost a Z shape from the rooftops along the sidewalk and now down this shadow. So that's kind of a neat pattern to the whole painting, a way to lead the eye. Now in the car, the back of the car, I want to really darken it, but just towards the top edge. Let the color float downwards, but darkest right at the top which again makes that a much more interesting shape than having it uniformly dark. Now I'm just adding some value, some more value to the shadow while it's wet, so it'll, it'll uh, blend in there nicely. See that? The stroke here kind of emphasizes that Z effect. 
and then put this tail light on while the wash is wet so it'll bleed in. Okay, so I'm adding some detail up here, but then kind of washing it out. It's a very effective way to lead your eye towards the center of the paper, center of interest. Okay, now I'm going in and doing the detail of the windows. Lots of them, lots of detail. The, the beautiful point on this brush makes it uh, quite a bit easier. I'm just playing with some of the edges to kind of uh, make them as square as possible. Okay, so the windows, the shape changes and all that, but I'm not going to show all of them. But you get the idea. But what I'm trying to do is as the windows go down to the center of interest, I start dropping other colors into the wash. You know, so that the wash becomes more uh, vibrant, stronger as we get down to the center of interest. So I've just carried on with these shapes. And the bottom row here that you can see the, uh, the bottom part is a nice curved shape. A little change of pace. Yeah, you can see I'm, I'm just dropping some ultramarine and some cobalt into that first wash. So you can you get the idea these bottom washes are more interesting, which is just a way to bring your eye down there. And then just some detail that's around the windows. Just, just trying to make things more interesting by adding little bits of detail. And uh, I'm leaving out so much detail that's actually there. There's a tremendous amount of you know, carvings and, and detail and sh shapes all over these walls. So you really can play as much as you would like. Okay, now here I'm just emphasizing these shapes. So I, I put some color, some ultramarine, then I just add pure water to let that first stroke blend in or bleed down. And here are just some details. Again, I'm getting nearer to the center of interest, so I want to have more detail. But on the left side, just wash it out. We're starting to build things up. Now this is my center of interest, so I have a very dark mixture going around these lamps so you can see how much they're standing out. And around the people. You can see that blue-purple shadow which seems so dark and so bold almost, how, uh, how light a value it is compared to this uh, particular wash. 
over here I'm just trying to find ways to connect that shape so it's just not sitting by itself in the center of interest but kind of move some of that value around yeah go right over the people here Now that foliage above the sign is kind of uh, lost any oomph, so I just want to reinforce that. And again, move that color. Don't leave it in just one place. So this is a kind of hint of a tree or something over there, which is all I want, just a hint. Now I'm going to darken the car again, because I want it to stand out from that shadow. So the strong color towards the top, then just water. You can see it nicely bleeding down, emphasizing that. A car is a very interesting shape as it cuts off that corner. Now doing the faces. Some of these figures are facing, and we're seeing the, their faces, and a couple of them we're seeing the, the uh, their back of their head. Okay, so I dried it off. And now the sidewalk. And it, it just, it's too isolated a shape, so I just want to see if I can sort of join that shape to emphasize the sidewalk there, or the crosswalk. Yeah, I'm just looking for ways to connect shapes. So it's an odd angle there, but it's more effective. I'm just straightening that up a bit, dry it off again. Now let's work on these figures and uh, give them some value and really bring them forward. This figure, we're seeing the back of them. And my, uh, my favorite secret weapon, Cobalt Teal, for some of them. Switch to the number eight. I'll do these two figures that are actually on the crosswalk. And in the picture, they're in the photograph, they're going the other way, but I thought it would emphasize the center of interest to have them walking towards it. Put some hair on some of the figures, including the ones like this that we're seeing the back of. He has a little hat on. And then the legs. And just the only problem, let's get the legs down to the sidewalk. They're a little short there. That's it. That's it. I like the effect when one leg is longer than the other it really gives a sense of the figures walking and then some shadow under them which you know it may or may not have been there but what it does is connect those shapes they're much more interesting connected and these ones trying for the dry brush with uh, limited success and again a little shadow under them to connect those two shapes and then this darker value is just to connect the shapes, to connect the figures to the background. And strengthening the value in the figures. Now, this is Chinese white straight from the tube, which really makes those figures pop. 
can stand it much more now. Much more. Put the hands, some hands on a few of them. Okay, now I'm just looking at ways to make the surface of the painting more interesting. So I'm I'm starting to, you know, dab around some blobs of color. And it just makes it uh, it gives the eye some reason to wander around rather than just staying in one area. And now dark uh, doing the street lights. Yeah, not bothering to bring the poles right down to the ground, which I think is more interesting. I'm suggesting a tree over here and uh, not sure if that's totally necessary. A little detailing in the, uh, the, the top there. A little Chinese white here and there. And I thought this sign, since I have cobalt teal in the character, and there I thought it would be need some cobalt teal in other areas. And again, just dabbing it around a bit. It does make a more interesting surface to the painting. Uh, some darker shapes in there for exactly the same reason. Now emphasizing a little bit on this building, very sketchy detail, but just at the bottom, because that's your towards the center of interest. <laughs> 